Next on the Broadway show is our 2024 Broadway spring preview. TV and movie star Michael Imperioli making his Broadway debut in An Enemy of the People. Plus, Gail Rankin comes to the Kit Kat Club. We're sitting down with the star of Cabaret. Hi, I'm Paul Wontorek, and I'm here in Hollywood with Mr. Wayne Brady talking about The Wiz. It's coming to Broadway. How excited are you? Come on. So you wanted to meet The Wizard? Well, you have. And the circus comes to town. You're going to meet the stars of the new musical, Water for Elephants. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. If you're looking for Broadway's biggest stars and shows, you have come to the right place. It's The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Welcome. A star-packed production on Broadway this spring, it's a revival of An Enemy of the People, starring Emmy winners Jeremy Strong and Michael Imperioli. Imperioli setting the bar for stardom, not only making his Broadway debut, but also making a big splash with his new New York City bar. We had a chance to chat. Well, I want to start with where we are, but tell me about Scarlett. So this is Scarlet Lounge uh, on Amsterdam Avenue between 82nd and 83rd, and it's uh, really my wife Victoria Imperial. It's her creation. She built it, designed it, and um, it's an intimate cocktail lounge with really creative alcoholic and non-alcoholic cocktails, as well as some really great, delicious snacks. It's it's not a full menu sit-down right. restaurant, but it's a cocktail lounge with some, you know, some good snacks. What made you both want to do this? I mean, it just, it feels like, I feel like it's just such a real New York place, you know? It just, yeah. you just it feels like a different, you walk in off the street and it ha you have a different vibe here. It's a kind of place you can dress up for mm -hmm. or you can dress down for. And a lot of our, our customers are neighborhood. Right. It's both a neighborhood place and a destination place. It kind of does both. And there's not a place like this, especially in this neighborhood. Mm -mm. Um, it's pretty unique. All right, so let's talk about you because you have a lot of different performances coming up, uh, one in particular that you're gonna be able to walk to now that you're living in this uh, area. Talk a little bit about Broadway. So An Enemy of the People opens March 18th. I started out in theater in New York, both as a producer and as an actor. You know, I started producing theater in my early 20s and off off-Broadway and uh, worked a lot as an actor off-Broadway, off off-Broadway, never did a Broadway show. Came close, it almost happened a couple of times. Right never happened in you know so now it's like 36 years of it's time of working and then you know and i when we lived in california for a few years from mm -hmm. 2012 to about 2019 when I, we moved back i said i re, you know i told my agents i really want to do some plays this one came my way and it was just like wow because it's one of my favorite plays mm -hmm. and then Jeremy Strong from Succession, who's just amazing. And I was like, it couldn't have been a better opportunity. And Amy Herzog doing the adaptation. So uh, I was just thrilled. Jeremy Strong, have you worked with Jeremy before? No, we've never worked together. You got HBO history. We have HBO history. We've, we finally met at the you know press conference when we announced this. Uh, but I'm you know a big admirer of his work. I think it's a, a really tremendous role for him personally as an actor. I think it's, he's, uh, he will be brilliant in this, and um, it's a thrill, yeah. Welcome to the cabaret at the Kit Kat Club, a sinister and visionary new revival of the classic Broadway musical, direct from London's West End. It stars Oscar and Tony winner Eddie Redmayne as the MC, and Perry Mason and Glow star Gail Rankin as Sally Bowles. We had a chance to chat. I do feel like a horse at the gate. I feel like a horse at the gate. I'm kind of, I'm kind of on fire. I think it's going to be a really important journey about me getting to know myself as a performer and as an artist. It's such a huge undertaking, and I think what a gift, you know. Kind of the tagline has become the the female Hamlet of musical theater, which I'm like, I'll be going to throw up now. I feel really really excited, really scared, which I think is an amazing thing. I feel more alive than I've ever felt. The first time Eddie called me actually was after I got the part. He's a producer on the show and extremely involved and is deeply humble and so deeply committed to, to this project. We got to talk about how there is an umbilical cord between those two characters and this production really explores that. He's wonderful and we've spent some time together and we just were texting today about 
how real this is all getting. It's a leading lady moment and that's a, a really, that's an honour to be seen in that light is um, humbling and moving and, you know, lights fire under my I really wanted it, I think I've always wanted it. And it's a vulnerable thing to admit. The Wiz continues its march on the yellow brick road to Broadway and five-time Emmy winner Wayne Brady just eased on into the title role. He is The Wiz. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Mr. Brady. Yes, sir. Good to see you out in LA. It's good to see you too. In the heart of LA, like that's, that's the 101. I see the Griffith Observatory up there. Mm -hmm. This is like the heart of LA. This is a hub. It's Hollywood. It's where people come to make dreams happen. And then when those dreams don't happen, they move right back to Kansas. Kansas, very intentional state you chose Very, there. very specific. You're, you're in Wizard of Oz land. Come on, man. Oh, Frank Baum, you're, you're right in it. Source material. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought that right here is where the hottest show of the spring is happening? Who knew? On Broadway. Right up the street from the, from here, the Pantages. And, and it feels amazing. Yeah? I, it, it is. It's a different feeling because I haven't been a part of a production right. at the nascent stage. Yeah. So from going from the workshop to then jumping on a fast moving train in San Francisco, now we're in LA, next stop Broadway. It's a completely different experience. This is a really cool role. I was actually thinking about who I've seen do this role. It's an interesting seen? batch of people. I saw Andre De Shields, the legend. You saw Andre De Shields. I saw the revival in the 90s. He and Stephanie Mills both did it at the Beacon Theater. I did And my friend Al that. said, you need to see them do it. And he said, you need to see what happens when she sings home. And people were literally standing on their seats. And then, of course, Richard Pryor. I grew up with... with right in the movie, like me. R yes, yeah. the film. The film was very important to me. Uh, I saw David Alan Greer do it. Out right. in California. At, at La Jolla. La Jolla. Yeah, and I saw Queen Latifah do it on TV. And of course, I saw Alan Mingo Jr. do yes. it on the tour before LA. Okay, yes. And I saw same. Mr. Brady Baby do it last night. Come on. <laughs> it's a good, an interesting batch of people. And the thing I think that all those people have in common is the Wiz has to have a certain thing to them. The best way to portray a role where you're a showman is to show, man. Because at a certain point, depending on the the piece like this you have to show that darkness that they have because uh -huh. that's what makes it interesting and in the production what does the wiz want to do really on a sur surface level it's almost criminal right this teenager yeah. comes along with her magical teenager friends i'm not gonna go kill that witch you guys go kill her. If you do that, I'll give you everything you want. I just lied to her face. I just lied to this girl's face with a smile. I enlisted their aid. Mm -hmm. When it happens, I'm packing my stuff and getting ready to leave. Then I yell at them and give them the life lesson of, look, sorry, that's what it is. <laughs> yep. I could have never earned that at the second scene if the first scene didn't have this, hey, baby, let me sing for you. Let me make you feel good. It's been really fun for me to realize that you're such a theater person. Not, not only have you done the roles on Broadway, but you did Rent out here. I saw you do Mary Louie Roll Along out here. You oh, were yeah. actually a great Charlie. Like, oh, thank you. Yeah, you were fantastic. But I just love how you, 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 you just seem to just really love musical theater. Well, well, cause I don't just love it. See, see, that's the thing. And then when someone, you know, a, a, I'll, I'll call them a civilian, watches the show, like, you should do more acting. No, baby, I don't do acting. I'm an actor. Uh -huh. I am a theater actor who got lucky and went the other way yeah. for TV to happen. I just wanted to use TV to be able to pay my rent and to get on stage because for my money, no one is more talented than the people on Broadway. The Outsiders comes to Broadway this spring. Of course, it's based on the iconic novel that we all know and love by S.E. Hinton. Let's send it out to Charlie Cooper. Hi, I'm Charlie Cooper, and I'm taking you behind the scenes of the photo shoot for The Outsiders. Brody, listen, the energy in here has been electric, mm -hmm. and you've been a big part of that. What's the photo shoot been like for you so far? It's been uh, electric. Yeah, I think you, I think you said it right. It's been, it's been the universe. It's <laughs> been all of us together 
having a good time. It's like such a beautiful time to bond with each other before we start rehearsals and like, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. I just saw you guys back there, literally just the fierceness in your eyes. How do you yeah. prepare for something like that in a moment like that? Life, you just bring life to it. Okay. And I think we've all been angry at some point. You know, <laughs> we're about to get it popping. That's what's about to happen. You know, you're really repping for the ladies in this show. I for feel the like ladies. the feminine energy is needed and we love it. And can you just kind of talk about that? I really appreciate you saying that because it's it's something special to be the only girly pop. Being the only female principal is is something that I don't take for granted. I think Cherry's story especially is one that is very true to my heart and I'm excited to tell her story with as much joy and as much kindness and as much playfulness as I can. People love this story. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how you're gonna bring yourself to this. I feel like I can't not bring myself to it because I've always been like an artsy kind of weird kid like in towns where that's not like the norm. Yeah. So like I just kind of get it you know. It's good to be who you are, an individual. That's just something I really believe in and something I, I feel is present in the show. Want to see what all the hype is about? The Outsider starts previews on March 16th and opens on April 11th. This is a Broadway show. We're going to be back with you in just a few. Thanks for staying with us for this latest episode of the Broadway show. I'm so glad you're here. And now it's time to go under the big top. Water for Elephants brings the circus to Broadway this spring. Based on the best-selling novel from 2006, it actually features real circus performers and big-time Broadway talent. We got to know the stars. The circus aspect of the team of actors yeah. is is adding an element that I've never seen in, in a musical, uh, particularly on Broadway. I mean, these people's lives are literally in each other's hands, they're throwing each other 40 feet in the air and catching each other. So there's a real camaraderie that comes to the cast that's even a step up from the normal sense of support. I get to hop on a trapeze and I'm swinging from there and I get to do this beautiful lyrical act on it. And it is so much fun. I, I feel, everybody's always asking me, like, are you afraid of the heights? And I'm, I'm, kinda, I'm kind of living my best life up there. It's, it's, I think because I have a background in dance, it, it lends itself to mm -hmm. trapeze in a really fun way and I love it. I, I just want to keep learning so much more. Coming to the theater was less overwhelming than I thought it would be. I mean, it was emotional. I almost cried seeing the front of the theater, but it felt like coming home. I mean, this is what I grew up doing, and I haven't been here in New York for a Broadway show, but it, it did feel like coming home a bit. Um, so it's scary, but it's exciting, and I mean, it's such a special group. Limpika comes to Broadway this spring based on the life of the trailblazing Polish Art Deco artist. It stars Eden Espinosa and is directed by Tony Award winner Rachel Chavkin. Let's send it out to Beth Stevens. Thanks, Tamsin. Rachel Chavkin won a Tony Award for Hadestown. Now she's returning to Broadway with Lempica. The new musical delves into the life of Art Deco painter Tamara de Lempica. I caught up with the director in the rehearsal room. Well, how is rehearsal going? Oh my God, it's so fun. It's really exhilarating. This cast is just extraordinary. And some of the artists, including Eden Espinosa, uh, Andrew Szymanski, Nate Stampley, they've been with the show back since its first production in 2018 at Williamstown. It's very elegant and it feels like tomorrow's work in a really muscular, uh, elegant way. The musical is about Tamara de Lempica. Yeah. I feel like Tamara de Lempica is not as well known as other artists of the period. Sure. So what do you want people to know about her? I feel like audiences coming in might know nothing. Yeah. My experience always when I say I'm developing a show about Tamara de Lempica is like, oh, I don't know who that is. And then I show them her artwork and they're like, oh, I totally know who this is. Mm -hmm. And they know it maybe because they or someone else had one of her posters on their wall at college. They know it because it's in 
Madonna's videos. It's in Lady Gaga's work. Rihanna. I mean, it's in Beyonce. It's in. It's in any strong woman. There is something about how she took humans because she was a portrait painter, uh, and she made them gods. And I think there is something about that that is deeply appealing. I hope that people leave understanding Tamara was a painter of humans. And I hope people leave understanding the amount of nuance that is there in these paintings and like the ferocity that is in the eyes of the people that she painted. She was a survivor in many, many ways. She was a survivor of um, revolution. She was a survivor of sexual assault. She was a survivor of uh, a lot of misogyny that she had to move through. And I think you feel her will to live and thrive in her artwork. And I hope people will receive that. There's nothing like the hustle and bustle of a new Broadway season, and New 42 Studios is a great place to take in that energy. I'm here taking a tour of the rehearsal space located right in the heart of Times Square. All right, now we are down on the fifth floor in the green room. I can't think of a better way to start the tour. This is uh, where everybody comes to take their break. And there is the man himself giving us our tour, Ed Stallsworth, Director of Operations. Ed, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for being here. So we're here in the break room. I, I guess this is kind of where, where everybody uh, meets up and this is where everybody, we see people right from the notebook right here taking their lunch. Yeah, you know, it really is. Um, with the 14 rehearsal studios, um, a really great thing is that they all have the opportunity to come down here and have lunch and catch up with old friends, people they used to do shows with, people they haven't seen in a while, you know, they catch up at the microwave here, and um, it's a it, it's a great time. It's really it's a lovely reunion spot for people. We're getting ready, obviously, for the spring, and this place seems bustling. Is does it always get busier before the big season? You know, reveals of shows. Absolutely, I would say. Um, uh, you know, in the fall, we are just slammed for all the fall stuff that's coming sure. in, and then come the spring, everything just explodes again, which is really really fantastic. All right, so now we're here on the sixth floor, one of the five floors. So what, what do we got? I, I hear the music behind me. We got After Midnight going on on this floor? Yeah, we do. That's we do. amazing. Do, do you think we could like maybe peek in? Do you think anyone's around? Well, I think you can peek in. <laughs> hey. Hi, Perry, how's how it you going? doing? Perry, Hi, good, good to see you. Good to see you. Y'all want to see a little bit of After Midnight rehearsal? I would absolutely love it. How are rehearsals going? They're going great. We're learning the music. We're learning the staging. They're learning the dance. You want to take a look? Let's take a peek. Let's do it. We are here right on the seventh floor. This is what I love about rehearsal studios. You never know what show is going on. You never know what you're gonna run into. Right now, we have The Notebook opening this spring. I'm so excited. I love the movie. I do cry every time though, so I might need to bring some of the tissues, but I'm so excited. And oh my God, look what we have here in the hallway on their way to rehearsal. We have John and Jordan playing Noah and Allie in the production. Guys, what's going on? How are we doing? So We're doing good. well. How are you doing, man? <laughs> Chicago loved it. I cannot wait to see it. I don't want any spoilers or anything, but but I love the movie. I know there's a lot of people out there who did as well. What what can fans of the movie expect going into this Broadway show? I mean, I would I would almost ask folks not to expect anything. To know that you have you will always have the film to love, um, and that you can certainly expect the same heartbeat. You know, mm -hmm. Noah and Ali are they're, they're very much intact, um, but to come in with with fresh eyes. Live theater is just a different experience, you know, so while I'm at home crying at the movie, you're watching real human beings, you know, right in front of your eyes. And so I say, bring tissues. Well, I can't think of a better place to end the tour. This is a beautiful office overlooking 42nd Street here in the office with the CEO himself. So Russell, when you have a season coming like this and that energy, do you feel that pick up when you have new shows, you know, coming in and almost every room is booked? Yeah, I mean, what's wild about being here and sometimes I think I do it along with some of our staff is you just ride the elevators because if you ride the elevators, not only are you gonna know people coming sort of on and off from floor by floor, but what's really fascinating is to watch them, the, the artists in the building, recognize each other and to see the camaraderie and the love and the artistry on the elevator. Um, and you, you know, we've had people, you know, playing guitar on the elevator. We've had people singing on the elevator. We, and, and as each door opens, it's a different sort of soundtrack to what's going on on that floor. And it's, it is pretty spectacular. 
This Black History Month, we're highlighting some of Broadway's most influential black artists. It's a big year for director Shelley Williams as she ushers two shows to Broadway this spring. After nearly 45 years, she's bringing The Wiz back to Broadway with an entirely black cast and creative team. And currently in previews is a stage adaptation of Nicholas Sparks' The Notebook, which Williams is also co-directing. It's a beloved story we all know. This time it features a racially diverse cast. She's also developing Disney's Hidden Figures, which tells the true story of three black women working at NASA during the space race. The musical based on the book of the same name and the 2016 film adaptation. Having been an actor herself in Broadway shows like Aida and Rent, Shelley knows firsthand what a performer needs from a director. She's also a founding member of Black Theater United, an organization that supports and protects black talent in the theater. Witness Shelley's magical direction in The Notebook and The Wiz on Broadway this spring. She's forever in blue jeans. Amber Ardolino plays Marsha Murphy in A Beautiful Noise, the Neil Diamond musical. And Amber is doing a vlog for us over at Broadway.com. It's called The Denim Diaries. Check out the full episodes over at Broadway.com. And that's going to do it for us. But for tickets, or if you want to check out extended cuts of all these interviews, head over to Broadway.com. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.